Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be looking at the simple counter and making our own counter that counts up using minutes and seconds. We'll be doing that by using modulus and floor. If you've never used those before, don't be afraid because today we're gonna to show you how easy they are to use. Let's go ahead and dive in and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is pull out a script gizmo and a text gizmo. And then on our text gizmo, we're gonna attach this script right from the get-go so we can play with it from the moment we get started. We'll go into our script. I'm gonna go ahead and name this Lakes Timer. And then over here, on my text object from the bottom right, I'm gonna attach the lakes timer script. Awesome. So now I've got this placed here so we can see what we're doing. And when world is started, we wanna start by creating a basic loop. So we're gonna go over here and bring over when event is received. And we're gonna grab send event with delay. And then we're gonna go from the drop down and click new event and call this one loop. Awesome. We'll go ahead and select loop from this drop down. And now this is looping every one second, which is totally fine since everything we're doing is gonna be in seconds. So we'll just leave this as one. We're also going to thumbstick to the right, select and then thumbstick to the right to duplicate this up into the when world is started and now we have a loop that runs from the start of the world. And now the final task that we want to do is always printing text on this text object. So on our actions tab, I love to bring over my last step first. And in this case, that's displaying text. Look at that. It's already displaying S. So this is great, but we don't want to display S. We actually want to display a variable. From the variables tab, we're going to go ahead and click new variable, drop down and select string variable. And then we're going to call this display me. This is one of my favorite names because this is what we're displaying me, I, which, which is the variable. Then we'll click confirm and drag display me over and into the string input of our display text on self. And now it is displaying empty because there's nothing in there. So then what should we do? Well, we should set display me. So back on our values tab, we'll grab set to, bring that over on top of set display me. Dragging this up, you can duplicate this by thumb sticking to the right. And when you let go, it returns back to that original position here. And what are we setting it to? Well, we need to set it to a number value that is incrementing upwards. And so we like to call this an iterator. So on our variables tab, we're gonna create a new variable, which will be a number called iterator. We'll then go ahead and drag iterator over and you'll realize there's an error. This is because there's a type mismatch because a string and a number are not the same. So let's go ahead and delete this. And then back on our values tab, you'll see that there's a variable as string, which allows us to convert numbers to string. So we drag that over, drag iterator into the input slot of the as string. And now there are no errors and we should be receiving a zero. And so now to make this count upward, we go back to our values tab at the very top, grab set to, put that on top of display me and then the, what are we setting well we're going to be setting the iterator so we thumb stick to the right there again and then over on our operators tab we can grab the plus symbol let go of that over here on the right. Then we're gonna duplicate iterator into the A slot because we want this iterator to go up. So we have to add to its value. And then I'm gonna grab this one from up here and just duplicate. If you wanna grab a different one, it's found at the values tab at the bottom, you'll see number input. All right, so now that I've got this set up, you can see it is counting upwards. So congratulations, that is a huge first step. We can then drag this to the bottom because what I realized is that it starts at zero and goes up by one. But if I have it at the top, it starts at one. And we want it to start at zero. So fabulous. This is looking great. Now that you've seen this number has reached over 60, this is the problem, right? Like we want this to count in minutes and seconds. And so to calculate minutes, if we took say 73 divided by 60, you return one. So we know we're one minute in. And when it gets over 120, it becomes two. So we're two minutes in. But the problem with doing that is then we have a decimal remainder. To demonstrate this really quickly, we're going to go ahead and just delete iterator out of here here and then head on over to our operators tab and you're going to find the divide symbol which we're going to go drag into the string input then drag iterator into the a slot and a number value into the b slot so we can divide it by 60 which is because there's 60 seconds in a minute and what you'll see happen is that those aren't seconds that i've ever seen so what we really need is it to say one second so it's like zero minutes and one second so let's go ahead and click the undo button to undo that step back a frame there we go so the first thing we should do is set up our minutes so I'm going to duplicate this up and we're going to delete the iterator out of here. I'm leaving this one here for now, but we can probably delete this. Yeah, we'll come back to creating another set two later for seconds, but we're just going to start with displaying the current minute. And so if we do this, we're going to go and grab floor from op 
perforators. It's under basic math. And floor might sound weird because you're probably standing on one and uh, you're like, what does this have to do with numbers? Well, what floor does is it removes the decimal. So it's going to the floor. So earlier we saw zero point decimal. It removes that decimal, leaving us with a whole number. So now we're going to go and grab the divide symbol, place that into our in slot. We're going to bring iterator up into the A slot again, put a 60 in the B slot. And now it'll display that there is zero minutes. There we go. So we're at zero minutes for the first 60 seconds. If I change the iterator to count in say like sets of 30 seconds, you're gonna see that this is gonna quickly become one. And then in a couple more seconds, it becomes two and so on and so forth. So it is working. This is great. Now the next thing we need to do is display seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and click undo again so we can only add by one second at a time. And to add seconds, we're gonna then go and grab this set to duplicate, delete this from here. I'm grabbing the plus symbol from here, but you can also grab a clean one from right here. So I'm just going to bring this one over, drop it in here. We want to add to display me. So we're going to grab display me and put it over in the A slot. And what we're adding is going to be a concatenation, which if you've ever heard that word before is pretty scary, but it really just means to add two things together. So it's like A plus B equals AB, right? So A plus B plus C equals ABC. And it, like I said, not scary. And so then if we grab the plus symbol again, we're going to concatenate three values. So display me is that minutes that we we've already got. A is going to be the colon that goes between minutes and seconds. And so if we go over to our values tab at the bottom, you'll find string input. And so we're going to put that into the A slot. And for mine, I'm going to put a space shift colon space. And then in the B slot, we want to put our seconds. And so the question that you should be asking is how do we calculate seconds? And there's actually a really easy way to do it. It's called modulus. And if you've never used modulus before, it also sounds scary. I mean, most of these things do until you use them and then you use them and you're like, oh, got it. And to be very, very fair here, I was very scared of all of these when I got started. And now that I use them all the time, they've really leveled me up. So I'm hoping today you've learned some really cool tricks and that these are helping you guys. And if you have questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments. So what is modulus? Well, it looks like a percent symbol, but please note it has nothing to do with percent. It's just the symbol that's used to represent modulus. And so what we do is throw the modulus symbol into this B slot. But you'll remember we need to convert it to a string because a number is not a string. So we're going to go back to our values tab, grab the variable as string, place that in here first, then go back to operators, grab that modulus symbol, and now I'll tell you how it works. Modulus is going to take two inputs. The A gets divided by B, and whatever the remainder is, is what is returned. So remember how we got a decimal when we were dividing by 60? Well, instead of returning a decimal, it returns the whole value, which is the remainder. So we're just going to duplicate this down. So we take iterator into A, 60 goes into B, and it it literally instantly works. Look at there's one, two, three. And other than lacking an extra zero in front of it, this is a working counter that counts upwards counting minutes and seconds. Like unbelievable. Congratulations. This is so cool. And the only thing left to do is to add an if statement for when the value of the iterator is less than 10, because that's when it's a singular digit and we want to add a zero. So to do that, we go back to our events tab, scroll to the top where you'll find the control event if. We're going to bring if over and place it right above where we're adding seconds. We're also going to drag an else over, placing this below if. Make sure the indenting is below, so the bar needs to be here, not there. So we're going to let go right there. And now we want to ask the question, when is the iterator modulus 60 less than 10? So we want to know when the seconds count less than 10. And so we go to our operators tab, scroll up to less than. We'll bring the less than symbol over and into our if. Grab the iterator modulus 60, thumb sticking to the right into the A slot, then grabbing this number input, duplicating it into where we're just going to type in the number 10. And now we know when it is less than 10, we're going to do something special. And if it is greater than 10, we're going to do the regular thing. So we just put that here and then we're going to take this thumb sticking to the right, duplicate it into this top set. This second one here is where we need to add an extra zero. So right here we went space, colon, space. And so at the end, we want to add a zero and it looks like it seems to have removed my space. So actually, I think what we need to do is delete this and bring over a another value input just to be on the safe side. We'll let go of the string input here, and then we can type in space, shift, colon, space, zero. Now this zero gets added to the number, which then looks like that. Beautiful. Now you have a counter that counts up in minutes and seconds. It's actually pretty similar to do hours. And I mean, you could even do days. So you've got the basics to know how to do basically any counting. Great work. This is fantastic. And over here, don't forget, you can always come to the essentials bundle where we have this amazing simple counter that you can use if you don't want to write the script yourself. 
And you'll notice that when you go inside, it actually has some booleans, which allow you to say if count up, set time plus or set time minus, if not count up. Don't worry, boolean just means true or false. Nothing to be afraid of there. Great work. Keep learning. I'm so excited to see what you are all going to create. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in Horizon. Bye!